I'm Kathleen, and tonight Larry and I are here with Mike McGee. Hi, Mike. Hey, everybody. Mike. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm of excited. course, of course. On this rainy day, we're glad yeah, to have something yes. fun to do. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're, I'm trying to remember. I always try to remember when I meet, you know, have met the person. Um, and I don't remember when I met you, but I do remember that we were in a show together, The Hundred Dresses. Yes, yeah, exactly. I, that would have been um, a few years into my, R yeah, that would have been, a, yeah, that was a long time ago. That would have been a few <laughs> years into my RLT tenure. I, you know, you probably met me around Peter Pan, I would guess. Probably. Mm -hmm. Maybe before that with Jessica, my daughter Jessica taking classes. So we might have, we might have crossed paths. Then. As a parent kind of thing. Yeah. 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 yeah probably. We, she start, well, that's how we started out was her at RLT, uh, was her taking classes. So, um, right. so that was maybe, might have been our first interaction. Yeah. Absolutely. But definitely by Peter Pan time. That was like the first show I would have worked on that you probably would have maybe Worked been around time. a little bit yeah yeah, yeah exactly. absolutely so. absolutely kind of one of your shows kathleen because i'm trying to remember that i met mike but then i called and asked jessica to be in a movie one of oh the that's right yeah, 10 that's years right. ago but I, don't know, I don't know how i knew about jessica <laughs> she did a lot of um rlt shows mostly with linda though right? mostly with linda yeah. i think yeah in haskell she was in cinderella three times yeah. oh. um and uh, and she was in, uh, well, she was in hundred dresses as, as like the stage crew person that was on stage. And then she was in sideways stories from wayside school was her first, like really big lead or one of, you know, it was an yeah. ensemble show, but her big first big RLT part. And so, uh, and then she did a lot of the trooping shows, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, what are they? Uh, the RLT players and the, the storytellers. Players yeah. and storytellers. Mm -hmm. So she did a lot of that with Johanna and with, um, Stacy Savarsky wow. and uh, Renee Wimberly. So she was, she did a lot of that stuff. Oh. She may, there's a lot of ways you could have, <laughs> she was very it's active for quite right. a long time. Yeah. Right, right. So Mike, how did you get the acting and directing bug? Tell us about your so, journey into theater. I did not go the traditional path probably that most people do. So I uh, just a little background, I'm from New Jersey and the area I'm from is a very sportsy sports area. So I really wasn't exposed to too much arts except for, I was probably about 30 minutes outside New York City. And I remember my grandparents taking me to my first Broadway show, which was Peter Pan with Sandy Duncan when I was about eight or nine years old. Yeah, I still remember that. It's amazing how things sear into oh, your yeah. brain. Uh, and then the rest of that though, I went to Catholic school. There was really no arts programs. I went to all boys Catholic high school. It was all sports, sports, sports. Where did um, you go, no, Mike? What, Don Bosco what Prep in Ramsey, New Jersey. That's where my, my husband went. Oh, are you serious? How did we not ever make Don Bosco. Oh, yeah. Funny. Yeah. So there were no, uh, when I was there, there was no, I think they had even cut band at that point. So there was nothing. Now they do full on musicals with the girls school <laughs> and they, all this stuff. But then, but anyway, my senior year, a teacher started at like a more, he called it drama class, but it was more history of theater. And so I took that as an elective senior year and he took us to see Into the Woods, the original production with Bernadette Peters. He tre trekked in with 18 high school boys <laughs> on a train. Wow. And uh, yeah, and I loved it. And uh, so I, that kind of kicked off my love of theater and I, as a, as a patron and as a, as a going to theater, but I really didn't get involved until Jessica. We, uh, she started doing, we had a small, we have a small musical theater program here up in North Raleigh called Durant Road Musical Theater, you might've heard of. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she started doing uh, shows there and got the bug. And then we saw Cinderella. It was the first show we ever saw at RLT downtown uh at okay. the uh, fletcher opera house and we thought it was this oh my god broadway style production and uh yeah, Jessica right did, one day i'm gonna direct that play <laughs> <laughs> i did not ever think that even <laughs> as of a couple of years ago <laughs> i can promise you that um, I, I did not think that until patrick torres called me and asked me if i wanted to direct it um uh, i thought i was done with that show but we'll get there um so anyway jessica started taking classes at rlt and uh, I joined the RLT volunteer list and uh, I got a, a notification. They were looking for a deck crew. And I said to my wife, hey, you mind if I try this out? It sounds fun. I've always loved theater. And she said, sure. And it was, the rest That's... was history. I worked on deck crew for Epic Proportions uh, and with Rod Rich as the director. Uh, Rod and I'm sure Nancy was involved too. I don't remember, but I'm sure she was always around. And uh, yeah, right after that, I just went nonstop. I, I, right after that, I was the deck crew chief for Peter Pan and was in charge of flying the kids and <laughs> uh, just went from show to show to show and worked my way up to be a so stage great. manager. Yeah, still never so... thought I'd be an actor. And, and then, you know, Linda was very encouraging. Haskell Fitzsimmons was very encouraging, Linda Young, And so I started auditioning for shows just with no experience 
got a couple callbacks. I, uh, Larry, you and I were in a callback together at Lost in Yonkers, uh, which you beat me out for. No, I won't hold it against you. But uh, <laughs> yeah. and then um, and then uh, I think I'm answering a future question. But then uh, yeah, I I, uh, I got cast in uh, Dyer Van Frank at Noose Little Theater, and that was my first ever time on stage acting. Uh, I so just to backtrack for one second, I, I after after I I kind of worked my way up, I became a pretty prolific stage manager. So at that by that point, I was stage managing you know, two or three shows a year between RLT and Theater in the Park and Theater Raleigh. So I'd become a very, you know, in-demand yeah. stage manager. So I was doing that a lot. And then I just caught the bug to say, hey, let's try this acting so thing. Good. So yeah, so I did my first show at Noose Little Theater at Diary in Van Frank. I played Mr. Dussel the Dentist. Oh, that's a great, oh. uh, great part. Yeah. It was nice. a great role, you know, and uh, it was in that small space. Tony Pender was the director. Some of you may know Tony, Tony yeah. Pender. And uh <laughs> We did it very environmentally. So there was like a biker bar next door across the street. So on Sundays, the bikers would all drive. But so it, if we heard a noise, we had to stop like the Nazis were coming. And so on Sunday, when there was 800 motorcycles, we had to just finally give it up and just be like, forget it. We can't stop every time we hear a motorcycle. But yeah, and I just got the bug for acting then and started doing a bunch of shows after that. I did a lot at Town Players and Garner. Um, did a lot at, done a lot at Noose Little Theater, done a few things up in Wake Forest, acting wise, and then done, done a couple things at RLT uh, acting wise as well, yeah. So Tony did and I you did show 39 years ago. 39 years ago, Tony. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. He's been around wow. there for a long time. Yeah. Wow. Um Mike, did you have a mentor at all whether for the acting or the directing? Um yeah, I would say I didn't have maybe one singular mentor, but I think I had I had a, quite a few. Uh, Linda O'Day Young was definitely uh, what I would consider a mentor. I've taken a lot from her, uh, you know, and, and working with her. I worked, you know, I, I stage managed at least one show a year for her for a number of years, as well as my daughter, as we talked about being in a number of shows with her. So I was around Linda uh, quite a bit and learned quite a bit. I was my first big RLT acting role was with Linda in 100 Dresses. So I, you know, I learned a lot from her. Um, I got to learn a lot from Haskell stage managing for him. Uh, I stage managed Cinderella for him for like five years or five years and uh, you know, took a lot from him. I think, you know, you take little, I've taken little pieces from from lots of people yeah. as I've kind of gone through my directing. I, you know, I've got to work with Jesse Gephardt a, uh, as a stage manager a couple of times and learned a tremendous amount from him uh, from an acting and directing perspective. Sure. Uh, Theater, Ra Theater Raleigh, um, I had a lot of professional stage management experience. So I got to work with professional directors from New York and got, you know, just got to take a lot from them and watch them. I think that's why that's I felt great. comfortable kind of jumping in and directing when I did uh, because I had you know so many people to watch and learn from and and take things from so so I take take little bits from a lot of people those I'd oh, say yeah. were the main people that I, I probably uh, hold dear I still use a lot of Haskell's phrases at times uh, I, <laughs> I I still you know think of Linda and, and mention I give him credit when I talk about it with my cast uh, if I if I steal something so yeah, yeah. So that, those are probably the main folks throughout my career in different perspectives. Well, what, what year did that start when you you know? Uh, when you came to start doing stuff at RLT? Oh, I am on, uh, I've had a long journey with RLT. I've probably been doing stuff at RLT. Jessica's 22 and she, I'm not going to do the math on that, but uh, wow. it, it was, I'm probably been there about 14 years, 14. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's been a long time um, between, you know, being a parent and then being very active on tech crews and then stage managing. And then I've acted, the least I've done at RLT is acted. I've only done a couple of shows acting wise at RLT, but I was board president for two years and mm -hmm. served on the board for quite, quite a long time. And so uh, RLT is always going to be my home theater, no matter what oh. I do anywhere else. Yeah. Have you ever gotten any great advice either about acting or directing from someone? Um, again, I think it's those little things I steal from from people. Um, I'd say the, the biggest thing that I, I think I take both acting wise and I always talk to my cast about is, and whether Linda stole it from somebody or not, I don't know, but she used to always say, shake hands with your character before you go on stage. And uh, I hold that, I t still to this day tell casts, you know, that I always at some point talk about that I think it's just important because we all you know especially what I do I, I have a day job most of us in in the theater community are in the, I have a day job so you know you have so much going on in your life that it, to me it was always just that reflection point to say okay it's time to it's now time to put what happened today away and 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 do that so yeah I still to this day you know that's use great. that as a director and, and as an actor so I'd say that if I had to pick one piece of advice that I use more than anything uh, it's that and then you certainly can never forget Haskell and his write it down write it down write it down and uh, oh, I think I still have the jack <coughs> jack hall pencil that I, I do too yeah. <laughs> 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 so, 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, so there's little things like that, but I'd say the one thing more than anything that stands out is is the shake hands with your character mm -hmm. that yeah that sure. I took from uh, from Linda and heard her say many 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 a time. <laughs> yes. Do you have a favorite uh, theater actor or director? So. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. I, I'm sure I have a ton, but I'm gonna use two that are both mov movie actor. Oh, so sorry. I'm gonna answer this a couple of ways. So I think my favorite uh, theater director right now is uh, Rachel Chavkin. She directed uh, Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet and uh, Hades Town, and she's just really inventive. Natasha Pierre and The Great Comet was one of the first really immersive shows that I had seen, uh, where they had transformed the entire theater into just this Russian dance hall, and the action was all around you. And she's just really innovative with with what she does. Um, so I think that's probably from a director perspective. Um, I've seen a lot of her work. Um, uh, yeah, so probably her from a director perspective. And then, because I, I try to, you know, when I can, I mean, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm still learning directing. And so I'm not like what I would say cutting edge, but I do try to, you know, think of different things and, and change the way things are done and not try to do things just the same way that it's written out in the script. I almost get stubborn and do it, try to do the opposite of what the stage <laughs> notes direction say. Um, from an acting perspective, uh, I'm just gonna throw two because I've seen him in movies and, uh, and on stage. Brian Cranston, um, from an acting perspective, I got to see him in uh, a play called Network uh, yeah. in London where I was like two inches from him the entire show where he was standing and it was just amazing to just watch him inhabit that character. And, and then if you think about all the roles he's done on TV and, and things like that, he's got, you know, comedies, dramas, I mean, just everything. Uh, and then the other thing that really got me is I got to see Denzel Washington in Iceman Cometh wow. and just to see him command a stage for, I think it was over four hours. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was a haul. And, uh, but it was amazing to just, you know, the energy, he didn't, he didn't come on for the first 30 minutes or so of the show, but what he did, the entire audience just, it. it just changed. And, and then he just carried the show the rest of the way. Wow. So, um, wow. so yeah, those just because I think that crossover movie and, and acting, mm -hmm. I'm sure there's a ton of others, but, mm -hmm. but uh, I, uh, seeing Brian Cranston just because I, if you're not familiar with network, it's almost a monologue for oh, yeah. two hours. I mean, there is other actors on stage, but it's almost him just having a complete meltdown throughout two hours. And it's just, you know, just amazing to just see that and see I it so up close. Really? Again, a couple, you know, a couple months ago. Say yeah. that again. I just watched a movie a couple months ago. Then oh I, yeah. I saw yeah, some yeah, on his play. Yeah. yeah, it was amazing. I, I, it, was, it was in New York, but I didn't get to see it. Um, I didn't get to see it in New York. I, I got lucky and saw it in London. Nice. Do you have a worst audition story you'd like to share? Yes, and I am gonna even. I am gonna even, and it was. I'm gonna even rat out the person uh, involved. And it's it's funny, and I I, think, I don't know if we've actually ever talked about it, but uh, it was actually lost in Yonkers. It was one of my early uh, audition days. I think I would know how to handle the situation now, but I was reading with Patsy Clark, bless her heart, <laughs> and uh, and we've become you know friends since then. But um, it was this big emotional scene uh, where he's you know having it out with his mother finally. And just as I'm hitting the the kind of the plateau of the emotions, she read the the lines wrong and walked off stage. <laughs> and I kind of followed her with my body. So I ended up like turning my back to Haskell and the table. And I'm like, where is she going? And now I'm like, what do I do? Now I wouldn't know how to handle it. And I would have been able to handle it. But I was so new. I just kind of turned my back and kept doing the lines to somebody. And then she was looking at me off the wings and finally realized and was like, Sorry. <laughs> so, oh. And here I am yelling at my mother who is now nowhere to be found <laughs> and with my back turned to uh to the audience. Uh, so, what are you gonna do? Uh, wow, I don't yeah, what do you need dollars to do that? With, well, yeah, exactly. I think I think Larry probably had something to do with that, honestly. No, it was uh, it, it wasn't her fault. Certainly, I just uh, didn't know how to handle it, and I can certainly laugh about it now. But I still think about that so vividly. <laughs> and, oh yeah. Uh, I probably I probably I probably you know reminisce because I uh, just saw that incredible play that uh, she and uh, Nancy wrote, Bingo, and uh, uh, I think that was really in the forefront of my mind watching her. Uh, God bless her if I can yes. get that with, you know that together at ninety something years old. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> same so oh, yeah. yeah so that was it was a good learning experience so honestly I mean that's that's really what auditions are about they're they're good learning they are and you can um, I will we do because I, I was auditioning for uh, one of the cuckoo's nest there's a scene where the guard is supposed to take not let McMurphy get into the room or pull him off 
but the character had lines and the actor was so committed to playing the guard, he just dragged me off stage. And it's like, I didn't get my lines out. <laughs> and I wanted to say, can I do that again? I appreciate your, your professionalism, but you're supposed to let me get the lines out. All right. <laughs> If I, I'll give you one more because it's kind of funny. I, I was auditioning for Putnam County Spelling Bee uh, at News Little Theater, and I emailed the director ahead of time and said, listen, I don't sing. <laughs> uh, I know this is a musical, but the character of the vice principal doesn't mm -hmm. have to sing. Um, and so she's like, no, awesome. No worries about it. I'm like, great. I mean, she knew me. I had done shows up there. Get to the auditions. We do like readings or whatever. And then she's like, looks at me. And she's like, you haven't sung yet. And I'm like, remember we emailed <laughs> and talked about this? And she's like, mm, I don't care. Get up here and sing. And I was, so I had to sing. Luckily, I had kind of prepared something just in case. Uh, but uh, but I got the part. So uh, I guess go. I I guess I held my own enough. Uh, but that was that was very embarrassing. That was the first and only time I've sung legitimately. And uh, although I did sing in the show a little bit, but uh, yeah. So that was. But that see, was it might have been because you said yes you know, to the director. I, I mean, I think, I think it was partly, she actually said, you know, I, I went up there and was confident about it and, and just made it a character choice. And uh, yeah, it was pretty That's scary great. though. It was pretty, pretty terrifying. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. What's, do you have a favorite show you've directed or acted in you could talk about? Yeah. Um, so um, I'd say my favorite acting is uh, probably The Odd Couple playing Oscar. Um, that was um, just a joy every single night to, that was my first really big lead role. And uh, I mean, he never, that's like 80 pages where he's only off stage for like two pages. And, uh, um, you know, it was just so fun inhabiting that character and just getting to really just almost do anything every night. <laughs> like it just be- Well, and you got to mess up everything and right, never mess clean up. Mess up everything you know. and, and, you know, make, I, I played it opposite Greg Flowers. If, I don't know if you guys know Greg Flowers, but yeah. So, I mean, I got to spit potato chips all over the stage and got to, you know, just, just ridiculous stuff. And so that, and, and just, you know, some of the reactions, I mean, not just my acting, but Neil Simon's lines, you know, mm -hmm. just, just, it's just such a, just such a great role. And then also Putnam County Spelling Bee was very similar. I mean, it, it, that role is just so much fun to play. You just can, you know, I was able to ad lib a lot of the show and interact with the audience and, and you get to read all the, I mean, you're like a stand up comedian because you read all those words with the most ridiculous, uh, ridiculous uh, definitions. And right. I mean, you just, you just know the audience and I, you know, you really control, people don't know, you really control that show a lot because you decide when to toss people. It's really like a mind game in the whole show. You have to stay wow. like in it the whole time because you want to get to a certain cadence where people aren't getting dropped out too soon, but you're not because you have audience participation for those right. in the show. And so it's really like, and you, you get to, there's, you know, we had a list of, you know, probably a hundred words, but I could kind of figure out which ones I wanted to use every night based on how it was going and all this stuff. And some of That's them are, silly. you know, border, borderline dirty and, you know, up in New Little Theater, it's a little more conservative of an audience. So, but I kept, you know, we, I, I didn't, we didn't get very political, but I kept still some of the saucy words in and, uh, you know, it's just so much fun to just be able to, to just vamp with the audience every day. And it was ever, it wow. was a different show every, it was a completely sure. different show every night, even though the, the actors parts are all scripted that mm -hmm. you just don't know, know what's going to happen. You know, I mean, we had in dress rehearsal had a person spell cat wrong. They got overwhelmed with <laughs> the moment and uh, she just, well, like, I think it was just anxiety. Like she didn't even do it on purpose. And then you have to worry about people purposely doing things on purpose, but right. yeah, so you just never know. It was just a super fun role. So those, those are probably my, my two favorite roles that I've done. I, I prefer <laughs> comedy as an actor, even though I've done some drama stuff, but I, I prefer as an actor comedy. Directing wise, um, I think Larry, I'm going to have to give it to you. I think Sylvia is is probably um, my uh, my top um, my top directing experience. That was a that was a special show with a wow. special cast, and uh, I think we really created something unique in that space that we had to deal with. Um, and uh, you know, I got so much positive feedback of even people that saw the Broadway production and and you know liked ours better and and. Uh, you know, I, I like the fact that we didn't hold back. We, we, we threw all the dirty words at everybody. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, that was just a special show. Uh, it, was, it was such a- That was show. wonderful. Yeah. It's one of my favorite would... shows. And uh, you have to tell actors, like I saw an RLT did it years ago and I didn't even look at the father. I mean, John Murphy's a great actor, but I didn't know how great the role was until I read it. It's like, so don't ever think a role is not good until you actually read it in your own, you know, read it for yourself. Yeah, that was that was fun. I mean, 
Tony Hefner. I mean, gosh, oh my gosh. And, you know, Sh Shanna and uh, Kylie was amazing as, uh, as Sylvia. And that, that just, that whole cast was just, just spot That's on. Right. I mean, I would, I would put that show up against any theater, right? You know, that was just, and you know, a lot of it wasn't me. We just, we just had a really great was, group of people that came together. Yeah. So that was probably my favorite directing experience. And then, you know, honestly, the, uh, sorry, I'm going long winded, but the first time I directed Cinderella was certainly um, overwhelming uh, as well as, um, as um, <laughs> amazing. Uh, it was, you know, such a different experience from what I was used to. I mean, Patrick offered me that role. He had only seen me direct one thing because like, we, we knew, he knew a year and a half ahead of time that Rod and Nancy weren't going to come back. They had said, listen, this is going to be my our last time period. So he, he wanted to get the person involved so that they could have some transition time, which was, which right. was awesome. How often yes. do you have that opportunity? Right. And so he had seen me direct um, The Curious Savage um, and he liked what I did because it was a it was a it's a big cast for a very small space in Wake Forest. So he really liked what I had done with the cast and, and the spacings and all that stuff. But he had and you know certainly they knew my experience as stage manning the show for five years. So you know he offered that when I had very little <laughs> directing experience. That's and uh, you know it sounded great at the time. I mean I never even would have thought about directing Cinderella. I'm also not huge, uh, uh, although even though I've stage managed a lot of musicals, I just don't have a strong musical background. And so. Uh, you know, and, and honestly, not until I got into it did I realize how overwhelming it is to deal with a cast that big, almost 30 people and a show that big. And then the expectations of the show that's been running for at that point, 34 years, I think, um, when I took it over, you know, and then people, you know, people have an expectation of that show. And I changed it a lot. We changed it a lot. And I shouldn't say I, Joe and Joe, uh, my music director and I changed a lot. And uh, luckily I assembled a great team with Jess Barber as a choreographer and Joe and her, her wife, Dre uh, and Dan Neckard as the stage manager. So I had a great, great team, but it was, it was overwhelming. I mean, I was, I was, we had a rough tech week that first year and I was, I broke down <laughs> the, the Wednesday of tech week, I guess, first preview was the first time we got through the show cleanly. Uh, and I was literally weeping in the, <laughs> in the, dark, in the dark by myself um, because we had finally gotten through the day. It was just, we were there every night till midnight and things just weren't working. And uh, yeah, wow. it was, but it was amazing once, you know, I still, you know, I'm hoping we get back to doing that in, in, in a year or so because it's just, you can't replace, it's hard to, I usually direct smaller shows in smaller spaces and it's hard to replicate what you get with a multi-generational cast like that to work with, you know, kids as young as eight, all the way up to, you know, I won't say how old Tim and Dennis are, but all the way up to that age. Um, and uh, it's just the energy that the teens bring and, and all that stuff. So it's, it's just such a different experience to what I'm used to as a director, but it was, it was, it was a challenge. It's, it's even, you think a show that's been running 30 something years and, and I can never, you know, as Rod and Nancy changed it quite a bit. Rod and Nancy opened the door to allowing us to, to change it. They were really the, the forebearers of, of not the Haskell never changed it, but you know, we, we, they made some pretty drastic direction changes with the show to push the Cinderella narrative in a different direction to give her a little bit more, um, choices over her her life's destiny and uh, and some other things and they cut songs and added songs and then joe and i uh cut songs and added songs we added a, a bunch of different things back into the show we added more stuff the second year and so uh so yeah we you know we uh, uh and then this year the second year was even more of a challenge because we decided to double cast um we decided to double cast the stepsisters so we had that challenge i had never had to get two sets of people ready and that um that was a totally new, you know, new experience as well. Yeah, so, uh, sure. yeah. How do you, do you, so Lily Logan, how, how would you uh, talk about that experience? Do you have time? Yeah, I, I'm good. Huh? If, you, if you want to keep listening to me. Yeah, that was, so that was, um, that was probably the, uh, I should have just retired after that. That was like probably the greatest acting year of my life. I had back to back uh, played Oscar and the odd couple. And then literally the day we closed, I had just been cast uh, and went right into right into uh, Death of a Salesman. Um, I, I kept, I was also at News Little Theater. Um, Randy Jordan kept asking me to audition and I kept saying no. Uh, I'm like, I need a break, I need a break. And he kept asking me to audition. And I'm like, no, I need a break. And there was a nice storm and the final night of auditions got canceled. So I said, perfect, I didn't really feel up to doing this. And then they, he emails me and goes, we're having another round of auditions on Saturday. And I'm like, Okay, I'll go to it. And so anyway, uh, I got cast. It was it was tough. It was it was hard. I don't consider I think I think for me personally, I struggle more with the dramatic acting than I do with the comedy. Um, and so it was I know it was 
you know, a little bit too young for the role at the time. Um, I'm, I'm getting into the right age right now. So I wouldn't, I always said I would never want to do it. But when I was thinking about this interview, I, I probably wouldn't mind revisiting it. I mean, it's, it's intense. It's, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, you know, he's just so, he just, his personality just changes on a dime and, and it, it's, it really taxes you as an actor to be completely upbeat and ridiculously over the top, happy and boastful one second. And then, you know, cursing out your wife and, you know, threatening to hit her two seconds later, you know, and then, and then, you know, dealing with the topic of suicide is, is never easy. And, uh, you know, that was another show where we had massive challenges with that show. Both, both the sons dropped out at various points up, including a week before or two weeks before we opened. Uh, now we, we ended up, uh, uh, we ended up much better for it with Jonathan and Gus, uh, stepping Jonathan King and Gus Allen stepping in and, and, uh, they were amazing and got off book within Gus came first and then he, I think he brought Jonathan along. Um, so we, you know, not only was I taking on probably the hardest role of my career, we had immense challenges, uh, throughout the whole rehearsal process. We had another cast member who was struggling on lines. And so that was another show that really didn't come together until like first dress rehearsal. And that was another show where, um, I, I guess it was a combination of, uh, the actual role of, of, you know, having the moment of, of, you know, he doesn't kill himself on stage, but uh, he does, you know, he goes off and afterwards just getting backstage for the curtain call and just all the emotions just like flowed out of me. Um, opening night, I'll never forget, you know, I, I did the, we did the show opening night and, uh, and my daughter was there who has a time was maybe 12 or 13, uh, not Jessica, my, my other daughter, Lilia. And uh, she was just sobbing. Like after the show, she was just absolutely sobbing just because of seeing her, you know, her father. So it was emotional. It was a roller coaster every night. Um, you know, it, it's, I much prefer, I think I much prefer getting a laugh than I do getting a cry. So, uh, but it was, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm grateful for, I mean, everybody, uh, most men would, would die to play that role. So it was, uh, it was absolutely a, an amazing challenge. Lines for me, luckily, knock on wood, lines for me, are, it's ne that's never the challenge I get. I'm usually the first one or one of the first people off book. So even it was a little bit of a challenge with that show, just coming off such a heavy line load before that. And I had to try to like flush that out of my brain. And then, but I still <laughs> got off, but I, it's just, there's just so much emotion in that show. And, mm -hmm. and I think when, you know, not being a technically trained actor, it was, it was, I think I got to a decent place, but I'd love to, I'd love to tackle it um, again. Although I've been focused mostly on directing over the last two or three years. So two years or so. So well, you could uh, direct the show. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I prefer to direct comedies. I'm going to be honest, or dark stuff, like darker stuff. I don't know. I'm, 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 uh, I'm uh, not as. I like to try new stuff and just different stuff. Not that some of the right. stuff I've directed is brand new, but I, I uh, you know, I'd rather there's people that probably do the classics better than I do. So, yeah, I would direct Odd Couple maybe. That would be fun. But yeah. Um. So when you were acting a lot, what was the type of actor you hoped you were on the stage with? It's the best. Um, yeah, I think it's just someone that's in the moment all the time and present and, and you can play off of them and have fun with them. And, uh, um, you know, luckily I've, I've, I can't, I mean, I've had some issues, I've had some issues acting with people not, you know, having some line issues and stuff like that. For the most part, I've been lucked out. I've lucked out with always being with real um, generous people and people committed to the show. Um, I've dealt with situations as a director and as a stage manager with, with tougher situations, but as an actor, I've always lucked out and, uh, and had good experiences. So I, I think it's just being able to come together and work together and, and be, you know, we're all going to drop lines. We're all going to forget our blocking for a second. You know, I, I, I was in one show, Sunshine Boys and Garner, and, you know, I'm usually pretty good. Well, I always feel like one thing I control is, is my lines and knowing them. And I just went completely blank for like probably the first and only time on stage where I just went like, I had no idea where we were, what time it was, what I was supposed to say next. What you show know, is and, this? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had been kind of helping another actor the whole show because he was struggling with lines. and He picked me right up. He was right on it. And so things like that where you just kind of work together as a team and, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, I always tell this to all my cast too. Most of us are doing this just for the joy of it. So if we're not there to have fun and enjoy ourselves, I mean, we need to be professional and do what we're supposed to do. But at the end of the day, like we all want to kind of enjoy this or else why are we doing it? None of us are making enough money. Even when I'm paid, I'm not making enough money to uh, <laughs> to, to do it for uh, a lot of headaches. And, and I've certainly had my share, but uh, but yeah, it's probably, uh, probably my answer. You know, we all have great moments on stage. Can you tell us a couple? It can be from a directing point of view as well. Uh, great moments? 
yeah, just great moment. Yeah, so I would say um, I I, uh, <laughs> I still can't think. Of it. So uh, Odd Couple, and it wasn't me; it was Neil Simon. But um, there was one line in Odd Couple where I knew every night that it was just going to kill. Like it was just going to, and it was the line where he uh, he says um, "f you," uh, you know, I uh, I oh, yeah. just you know you know that line, the "f you" line, and I just and it wasn't act, you know, it wasn't the actually, you know, he's. Uh, you leave little notes on my pillow, you know, F you. And then he goes, it took, it took me three hours to realize F you stood for feeling hunger. And that part of the line just killed every single night to the point that I had to not anticipate it and hold in the giggles before I deliver. Cause I'm mad at that point. And it was just so magical every night to know. And it wasn't me. It was, it was Neil Simon wrote the line, but it just having that anticipation of like, Oh, here we go. Here we go. And like every night. Um, and then, uh, also in that same show, um, there was a point where um, I would spit potato chips. We were fighting. It was the big fighting scene where we we're finally like sick of each other. And I would chew up potato chips, spit them on the floor. I'd stomp on them. So there'd be all these potato chips on the floor. So Greg Flowers playing Felix would sweep them up. And then he'd look at me. I was sitting on the couch smoking and reading the paper. And he'd come and take my baseball cap off, pour them in, and put it on my head. And so one night at rehearsal, I just, I took the cap off and I started eating the chips. Um, and so every night that I, and there was like, there was like screws in there. There was, like, <laughs> <laughs> but every night when I took the chip out and looked at it, you would hear an audience member go, "Oh no, oh no!" And so, stuff like that's that. great. So I, I just love reactions and stuff like that. Yes. So that was one of uh, that was one of my favorite. Um, I, I think I love as a director. I love. I, uh, maybe it's narcissistic. I don't know, but I just love sitting in the back and listening to the audience reactions. You know, especially for comedies. Like I, I just you know, I'm just, it's hard for me to be that kind of director that just leaves a show. I don't go to every show, but I just, to me, that's the payoff is, especially with like Cinderella watching the reactions and, uh, and even with Sylvia, you know, I used to love to sit in the back of the room and just watch how people were going to react. And, you know, when, when Kylie said all those horrific words, what they were going <laughs> to, how they were going to react to that and, and things like that. So I, I just, I love to just see how, I mean, that's to me, that's what live theater is about that's why I've been a little fatigued about no offense to all the theaters around here about zoom theater and all this other stuff because to me live theater is about sharing the experience with everybody and right. it's just it's just tough uh, that's the part I think I miss of theater the most is just the ability to share the experience with people so right yeah. uh what's the funniest thing that ever went wrong on stage uh well I'll give two I'll give one as an actor so um it was in Sunshine Boys and uh it was at a small theater in Garner, Garner Town Players. And so a lot of times the actors will help out in scene changes and things like that. They just don't have the, the... and so one of our fellow actresses was, uh, I won't say her name, but she'll laugh about it anyway. She was doing a scene change and the curtain started to go up. There was like poor communication. She was still on stage. And unfortunately she didn't make the decision to run off stage. She made the decision to dive behind the lazy boy and squat <laughs> behind the lazy boy, which I didn't know any of this was happening. And my entrance was right in the door there. And then I paced that entire scene behind the lazy boy. So I opened the door to come on my, I, I, I played the nephew. It was sunshine boys. I played the nephew. So I come into my uncle's apartment and the first thing I'm greeted with is a woman two feet in front of me squatting behind a lazy boy. And so I'm like, <sighs> Uh, and so then the whole scene, I had to pretend that I don't see this woman. Oh. Uh, and well, luckily that night, my family was in there and I'm like, did you see the woman behind the couch? And they're like, yeah, of course we did. We're not blind. So, but the whole scene I had to like interact and literally that uh. entire blocking was me walking back and forth behind the couch with a person back there. And, and, um, so that was from an actor perspective. I'd say the, uh, I don't know if it was the funniest. It was definitely uh, looking back on it, the, the craziest, um, when I was stage managing Cinderella, it wasn't the last year because the last year was with Rod and Nancy. So this would have been the year before and Julie Florham was still the music director. So it definitely was with Haskell. Um, a, a, a kid pulled the fire alarm in the middle of the show. And um, so I'm stage managing the alarm fire alarm goes off. Um, I mean, we are trained, but let's be honest, we're not trained for everything that's going to happen during a show as volunteer stage managers. And so I run, I run, we pulled the show. I run downstairs. Luckily the box office, not the box, but the house manager had seen the person do it. So she said, there's not a fire. I saw the person pull the fire alarm. So I ran back into the auditorium, said, everybody stay seated. You know, it's, it's a fa false alarm. Blah, blah. So I didn't have to turn the fire alarm off. So I run downstairs and luckily Jenny, Jenny was there. She comes running towards me. We're looking at each other like deers in the headlight. The fire alarm's piercing. But also, if, if you don't know, when the fire alarm's pulled, the, electric, the power is, is cut off. Oh. 
Oh. Um, it goes it goes to gener like whatever the backup power source is, I guess to avoid explosions or whatever happens with power and fire. Uh, I don't know, I'm not technical. So um, so anyway, Jenny figures out how to turn the the fire alarm off, and I think the fire department probably still came, but I didn't deal with that. So anyway, I'm catching my breath in the lobby, and all of a sudden I hear music, and I'm like why is there music? I'm the stage manager. Well, Julie Florin decided to start the show. I love you, Julie. If you watch this, Julie Florin decided to start the show without getting the go from me when I was still in the lobby. Well, the problem was the lighting, the, all the dimmer switches had rebooted. So they were still rebooting. So we had no stage lights and that show uses a lot of projections and the projector, um, the projector hadn't rebooted yet. And we were coming up to all the magic stuff. So I finally get in the booth and I'm like, I had the like guys like hitting the go button and nothing's happening. The projector's not going. So Jeremy Diamond, who is I think still in high school, uh, I said, "You go out on that pin rail and you turn that projector on." So he's crawling out in the on the on the uh, on the uh, uh, balcony, wow. turning the projector on. And, the, and so like literally right at the moment I had to call all the magic cues, everything came up right then. Oh. And we had you know, and it was like wow. Oh, yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> it was it was wow. the moments like that live with you for. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so those those were probably my two. Uh, two That's minutes. great. I want to see a play about that. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, wow. The craziness. If you, go, if you could go back in time and talk to your younger self when you first started into the arts, theater arts, what what advice would you tell yourself? Gosh, I wish I could tell myself to get into the theater arts uh, <laughs> before I was in my thirties. Um, I I think it's just. Um, I think it would just be take chances, take, take risks. I think part of that, my, my, especially as an early actor was just not being willing to go out for stuff. Uh, even today, you know, I mean, I, I don't know audition as much as I used to, but um, just, just be bold and be willing to, to take those chances and, and put yourself out there. Um, I think not growing up, have taking acting lessons and, and all that stuff. I, I hold myself back, like even the, with, with spelling me, um, you know, taking those chances of going for something that, you know, you just don't feel you're ready for. I mean, what the heck we're all, you never know, right? I mean, if I had told her no, I won't sing, and who knows what would have happened. So I think it's just just being willing to take those chances and, and try things out. Yeah. I do it better with my stage. You know, I, I definitely started stage managing before I was probably ready. I definitely started directing before I was probably ready or qualified. But with acting, I think I've been a little bit more like you know cautious and timid about trying trying different things, and a little more um, self conscious of working with people that have been doing it for for much longer than well than you like. also are out there in front of an audience when you're yeah, the actor. Well, that, that, that helps too. That helps too. well my yeah. sense of, of me how much i you know, the little i know of you is that you're very successful in your your day career and i and you come off you're very intelligent it looks like to me you brought that into the profession theater you know that you, you know yeah that, i mean I'm, the, the, good, the thing that's helped me is I speak a lot with my job and I speak in front of people a lot and lots of people. So that's not the same as acting, obviously, but I, I, I'm not really ever intimidated by the speaking in front of people, uh, you know, lines where the intimidation for me is, is like, you know, finding the emotional range or finding the other stuff with acting, you know, kind of thing. Um, but no, actually being in front of people and the same thing with directing. I mean, I, I coach and lead teams and stuff like that. So to me, directing is probably, even stage management is probably the most natural fit for what I do in a day job. So that part of that part comes easy, like directing, not that I'm the best director or anything, but, but to me, that whole process comes easy to me. I love that whole process of, of creating. Cause I, I, it's probably most natural to what I, what I do. So the, the acting part is the most, the most foreign to me. Um, from, from growing up, not having any, I'm sure I did like the Thanksgiving play in second grade or something, <laughs> but uh, having no formal training up and, up, you know, I've done, done stuff since, but leading up to that, I hadn't had any. What's, what's the first thing you want to do when we get out of this pandemic? Oh, I want to get on a plane <laughs> and I want to go to, uh, so I've got, a, I travel a lot to London and I've built up a, a bunch of friends and, and, and a group of friends in London and, and then I go to the theater there a lot. So I want to get to a plane and go to London. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing if I've got a very small social bubble of friends. So I have, I have had a very safe interactions with a very small number of the same people. So I've, I've had some human interaction. Um, you know, work is fine. Work is work. Uh, you know, I, I just, I, I really miss, I, I have never, I haven't been home. I've been doing a job world in a worldwide role for like five or six years. I haven't been home in, for six months straight 
in five years. I'm usually gone every couple of weeks for a week or so. So uh, yeah, I, I can't wait to get on a plane and, uh, and go somewhere. <laughs> That's yeah. great. Uh, and I want to, I want to sit in a theater, whether that's here or anywhere. I, I want, the other thing is I want to, I mean, the number one thing I want to do first is sit in a theater somewhere and watch a show with somebody, wherever that is. I mean, I, I miss that tremendously. So uh, I will right. certainly be, uh, as soon as a show opens here with a, a, you know, a crowd, I will be there. But then uh, as soon as I can get on a plane and go somewhere, that's, <laughs> that's uh, what I'm doing. Uh, well, I thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks us. so much for having me. This was so fun. fun. It yeah, was really absolutely. fun. Thank you. Um, getting Great to know to you, you more. Yeah. Great to um, see you guys actually see some people. I know. I know. I look forward to the time we can actually meet outside or inside. <laughs> but yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. But thank you, Larry. Thank you again. Wait, thank you, guys. This weekend, we're going to open up this with Lobby Hero. Say that again. Lobby, Lobby Hero. Hero. Yeah. Lobby be here so i yeah i had three directing jobs coming into this year i have no directing jobs right now um lobby hero would have opened this weekend yeah i think it would have yeah yeah i kind of forgot that <laughs> yeah that, yeah that's okay i was really looking forward to that one that was really one i was yeah. hopefully get a chance to do it sometime down the road mm -hmm. uh, again but yeah yeah to the future yeah exactly <laughs> exactly all right you take care thanks guys okay bye-bye